What's going on guys? So I have a fun video for you today. In front of you, you were looking at two trucks that are designed to compete head to head against each other, kind of in their own respectful rights. That is the 2023 GMC Denali truck that we have. This is a Sierra 1500, so this is a half ton truck, versus the 2024 Toyota Tundra. Now this is a capstone, so this is the high end trim. Now if you want to compare these directly against each other, really the capstone should be compared more against the Denali Ultimate. However, I think this is probably more of a financially close comparison simply because this truck has an MSRP of $75,000 and this truck has an MSRP of $80,000. So there's only a $5,000 difference between these two trucks. But what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to talk about some of the differences between these two trucks and we're going to see which one comes out on top in your minds as the truck that you would likely own. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so again, we have had this 2023 GMC Sierra Denali 1500 pickup truck for almost a year. It's been probably about two weeks away from being a year of ownership. Uh, we have about 16,000 miles on this truck, I believe. This has the three liter baby Duramax, the LZO Duramax, which is actually a slight decrease in price versus the engine a lot of people get in this truck, which is a 6.2 liter gas powered V8. So in my opinion, this is the smarter choice for for an engine for most people because it's going to give you a superior fuel economy number versus just about anything else on the road. And next to us, we have the review vehicle, 2024. This is a Toyota Tundra Crew Max Capstone Edition with the iForce Max V6 Twin Turbo Hybrid Engine. Now, let's start this off by talking about fuel economy. So these are both outrageously powerful trucks. The advantage in terms of actual power, speed, and acceleration absolutely go to the Tundra. The Tundra could probably kill the, the Denali in terms of a drag race. You'd really have to pit this up against the 6.2 liter truck, which we don't have. But in my opinion, from a practicality perspective, I believe this truck hauls butt. I believe that this truck is plenty fast. I don't think that there's any reason why this truck would need to be any faster than it is. This truck right here could probably boil the back tires off, which is not something that I would ever plan on doing. So from a practicality perspective, I'm fine with the reduced power that you get from the three liter diesel because it makes up for it in terms of fuel economy. The fuel economy numbers on this truck from a practical perspective, what I've actually been getting have been insane. If I do hard driving around town, rushing around by myself, so no one's judging me and saying, hey, slow down or, or drive a little you know, more economically responsible. I get about 19 miles per gallon on the low end. That's like the lowest fuel economy I get on this truck unless I'm towing, right? Unless I'm towing the RV. It's crazy. Normally, though, I get between 22 and 24 miles per gallon in the city, and I get between 28 and 33 miles per gallon on the highway, which is makes this truck absolutely a fuel sipping beast. I love the fuel economy numbers of this truck. And that is probably one of the biggest reasons why I like this truck so much. Now, the Toyota Tundra. So again, this has that iForce Max twin turbo hybrid V6 engine. Uh, on the paper, it says it gets between 19 and 21 miles per gallon. What I've actually been averaging in the city is closer to 16 miles per gallon, and on the highway, closer to 22 miles per gallon. So the fuel economy numbers aren't bad compared to any other full-size truck. But when you compare it against this truck, unfortunately, this is gonna be nowhere near the fuel economy numbers that you're gonna get with this truck. That said though, this has nowhere near the off the line performance, the zero to 60, you know, that hit the pedal and just feel your, your back gets, you know, squeezed into the seat performance that you get with this truck. So it really depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for sheer performance, the Toyota Tundra is going to squash this truck. If you're looking for fuel economy with reasonable performance, then that's where this truck is going to squash that truck. So it's kind of a tie because it just depends what you're looking for. For us, we were looking for fuel economy and that's really where this one gets a big thumbs up and a big advantage over the Tundra. Now, secondly, we can talk about looks, but looks is so subjective. I think both of these trucks are absolutely gorgeous looking. I think they both have so much curb appeal. It's hard to say one looks better than the other. However, I'm going to give this one to Toyota for one reason. They paint everything. So if you look at like the fender flares right here, they're a matted finish. If you look at the Toyota, they're painted and they match. And I think that look is a lot nicer. If 
GMC had done that to their truck, I think it would have looked even better. So definitely give the looks department to the Toyota and they get bonus points because this being a slightly more expensive model gets a retractable steps. Whereas this, you'd have to go to the Denali Ultimate or you'd have to pay for that accessory to be added. Again, that's where the $5,000 difference comes in, in in a couple cases, such as, again, the retractable steps that this specific Denali that we have does not have. Uh, they both have front parking sensors. They both have amazing light output, but the Toyota has better light output than the GMC. The lights on this truck are great. They cast a great swath of light on the road. The Toyota is a little better, a little sharper, a little cleaner, and it's probably because it uses three of the four projectors right there for normal headlight operations, and then the, fifth, the fourth one for high beams. Whereas on the Denali here, it has kind of a similar setup. It has two projectors on top, two projectors on bottom. The top two are for your normal headlights, and all four come on for your high beams. But it's kind of interesting now to see like quad projectors for headlights on pickup trucks, it's crazy. Uh, as far as fog lights go, the fog lights on this truck are more effective than the fog lights on here. The fog lights are these small little light pods down in the bottom on the GMC. They're much larger and wider on the Toyota, and the Toyota, when you turn them on, you can actively see a difference in terms of how much you know, how much light covers the road versus this. It's kind of one of those subtle things where you have to look to the edges to see if you get additional light output. But the Toyota definitely beats the GMC in terms of overall light output. In terms of stance, this is where it's kind of interesting. So both trucks have a very similar stance. They're roughly the exact same height. I always thought when we got our GMC Denali that being a four wheel drive truck, it looked like a very two wheel drive truck, if that makes sense. But after looking at the Tundra, it kind of looks the same way. You really couldn't tell if this were a four-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive truck. Neither of them have markings on the truck to indicate whether they're two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, but they are both four-wheel drive trucks, and they both have a really nice stance. Uh, the Toyota, to me, looks a little bit more aggressive in its stance, though. It looks like it could be a four-wheel drive truck, even though it is, whereas the GMC that we have right here, I think most people would just assume it were a two-wheel drive truck. So I have to give that aggressive side stance look to the Tundra over the Denali. Now, as we work our way to the interiors, sorry for the dirtiness of the interior, but this truck, this Toyota Tundra capstone has an absolutely beautiful interior. It feels very, very modern. It feels very, very fresh. It feels very, very um, luxury and high-end. It just absolutely screams, I have a luxury high-end vehicle. This interior could be in a number of different vehicles, and you would say this is a really, really amazing interior. The one thing I don't like, really the only thing I don't like about this interior, two things. The infotainment system, 14-inch screen, it's huge. But it doesn't, to me, feel like you get as much information on it as you get in the GMC. The GMC uses Google, so you can just simply say, hey, Google, and it will pop up questions, and you can do all sorts of cool things with it. But everything is, like, blown up on this screen. This one's almost for folks who might normally have a hard time seeing smaller fonts, perhaps, because everything is super large, uh, super in-your-face on this screen, and it seems as if the screen is excessively large for the size of font and everything that they put on it, if that makes sense. Now, the center console, this is something I don't like. I don't like the split or the breakup in the center console. It's a cool storage area. It'd be nice if they continued this wood all the way past it, and perhaps you lift this thing up like this, and it would cover this whole section, because... I don't rest my arm on this armrest. I rest it slightly past the armrest, and it would be nicer if it had more support for your arm. Um, almost anybody who's been in this truck with me has agreed. It looks beautiful. It's executed beautiful. But from a practicality perspective, it's not the greatest center console. You do have hidden pockets in different places. You have wireless charging up here as well. You have a traditional shifter, which I can honestly say I like. I'm, I'm not a big fan of these really awkward techniques that you have to use to shift vehicles these days. It can get really confusing, especially if you're going into a car wash and you have to switch it into neutral and you have to figure out what motion it takes to do that. I like that setup here. All your four-wheel drive and drive controls are right here in the center. Very, very intuitive, easy to work with. I like the interior of this truck. Now going into the Denali. First and foremost, it's a very business interior in this truck. It's very dark. Um, you can get it in other colors, sure, but this specific one that we have is kind of dark and neutral, but it still looks really good. It has a really, really nice look to it. 
little faux wooden cover there is me. I put that on there simply because I don't like to wear away the top of the steering wheels. We put these seat pads in here because I've mentioned time and time again, I am not a fan of the comfort of these seats. The bottom of these seats feel like I'm sitting on a board. Not, not happy with how these seats feel whenever I'm on a long drive at all. The back isn't as bad, but definitely the bottom part needed cushions. I mean, we added one for my wife and one for me because they just the seats just aren't comfortable to us. Um, that said, though, we really like the truck now that we have these cushions on it. All right, that, that fixed a lot of those problems. Also, a big difference between these two trucks is the way they do the infotainment system. This has a huge infotainment system. I think it's like 13 point something inches. Over there, it's 14, but it's diagonal. And if you look at the Toyota screen, it definitely looks like it's a much larger screen than the GMC screen. But the amount of information that they give you on the screen and what you're able to do seems a lot more intuitive to me. I actually really like how they set this screen up. It gives you a lot more practical capabilities to get two things, to view your maps, to look at what's going on with the truck. Uh, there's a lot of menus in here that are easier to navigate to versus the Toyota. The Toyota has definitely big, bold lettering. It's easy to see, it's easy to read, but to me, it feels a little basic, whereas this one always feels a little bit more advanced. And part of it's because they use Google Maps, and, and again, they use Google Assistant for you to be able to access anything. So if you have a smartphone, it's very similar to using a smartphone. The air conditioning controls, the piano keys are something that's essentially been a staple of GM trucks for a while now. They've had these in the trucks for, for about the last 10 years or longer and they work. They're easy to press, they're easy to get to. Um, sometimes you accidentally press them. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally toggled a feature on and off or dropped the tailgate because my wife you know, puts her purse somewhere or a drink is pressed up against one of the buttons or you just accidentally hit a button. Um, but yeah, they, they work, they're functional, they just get in the way sometimes. Now back to the Tundra, this is a feature that I don't know why the GMC doesn't have. It's like every truck has this except the GMC now, and it's a place to stow your sunglasses or driving glasses or reading glasses. Um, I love the fact that they have it in the Tundra. They don't have it in the GMC, and that kind of bugs me. I also love the fact that they have a standard 12-volt outlet right here. If you're using like a camera for your trailer, uh, if you're using one of those tire pumps or tire inflators that requires this type of connection, you really want to know your truck has it, and GM just doesn't put it in their trucks anymore, whereas Toyota still has it, and I can definitely appreciate that because I love having a 12 volt outlet inside of the truck and again absolutely no spot up here for sunglasses it's just it makes no sense at all really they have a huge spot right here that could easily be turned into extra storage for your sunglasses but to me gmc and chevy sometimes go the route of like apple where they design something and tell you this is what you like and you're going to be okay with it because this is how they designed it and i feel they should have incorporated a glass holder up here as well as a couple 12 volt jacks just throw a couple of them in there's there's like no reason not to have them just put one down here even put one off the side one in the back just giving us the ability to connect the things that we already own i think is super important Okay, so taking a look at the back seat, we have a little entertainment thing there. We have a thing to cover the windshield. The back seat of this truck is an absolute mess because we use this truck routinely. It's like a daily driver for us. But there's tons of room back here. Um, the seating isn't uncomfortable, but it's just like any truck back seat where it's not super comfortable because you don't have the ability to adjust the back unless you get something like a power wagon or a Ram where they have the adjustable bottom seat. You can slide it out and it adjusts the back seat back. Um, this truck doesn't, however, Tons and tons and tons of legroom, has rear air conditioning vents, has heated seats, but not cooled seats or ventilated seats. So it's a good space back here. There is plenty of room, especially legroom. All these trucks are getting super huge in terms of the cab configuration. But let's take a look at the Toyota. Okay, so here's the Toyota. Sorry, we have a little bit of grass and leaves in here. Uh, very similar space back here. So it's not as if one truck is any larger than the other in terms of legroom. If it is, it's it's marginal. It's not enough to really brag about. Um, what is nice though about the Toyota is they give you more butt seat space right here. So you have more space underneath your legs by a few inches, by like three inches. So you don't feel as if you are sitting on the edge of the seat like you do in the GMC. Again, let me show you kind of what's going on here. I have both doors open so I can do this in real time without needing to get a tape measure. But you can see there's a significant length advantage to the Toyota over the GMC in terms of how much seat is actually under your butt when you're sitting down. I love the fact that there are window screens on the Toyota. I think that's a very SUV thing to see on a Toyota. Um, but I love the fact that they put them there because oftentimes this is an area where you might have a small child or you may have someone who doesn't want the sun beaming on them the whole time they're driving. 
on the GMC, that is not an option. We have a little entertainment thing we put back there, so that didn't come with the vehicle. Um, as far as the ergonomics of the back, one thing I really like is the fact that you have ventilated seats back here. Not just heated, but also ventilated seats. You get a 110 outlet back here as well, up to 400 watts. In the GMC, you only get one 110 outlet inside of the center console, which I personally don't know why they don't put more of them. Um, from a connection perspective, you have more access to AC power in this truck than you do in that truck. You have a USB, USB-C, just like you have in the GMC, and you also have your air conditioning vents back here as well. This truck has a panoramic sunroof. The GMC has a standard sunroof, and you can't get, at least as of this video, you cannot get a panoramic sunroof on a GMC Denali pickup truck. Now let's talk about bed technology. So the GMC, of course, has their multi-pro tailgate which is super cool. Easy way to get into the bed of your truck. There's a little grab handle right there that flips up. And of course, you can do different things with this tailgate, such as use it as a load stop, use it as a seat, use it as a workbench. There's like five different things you can do with this. And, you know, for the most part, it lets you do those things. The only one we really use it for, or really two, using it as a step, using it as a seat, and I guess a third one, we've used it once as a load stop. But we didn't need to, but we did anyways. And that was to bring a really long ladder back here to the, the cabin. All right, Toyota. Toyota has a basic tailgate. They haven't really decided to compete in the tailgate wars, but they've done something really unique and interesting that I really like. They put a tailgate release right here. So you press that button on the side, it drops your tailgate, which is super nice. You can do it from your remote, you can do it from the handle, just like GMC, Ford, and everyone else, but you can also press that button right there to drop your tailgate, which is really nice. And you also have a power deploying step here in the back corner next to your bumper. So from an ease of access perspective, it's hard to say which one's easier, but I would say a quicker tailgate to access would be the Toyota. An example of that is if I drop this one down, because this step right here, which is in the bumper, is recessed in, you have to step into the bumper, grab a grab handle, and climb into the tailgate. It's possible to step up here and quickly on the tailgate and get into your bed, but it's not quite as easy as having a step that actually comes out. So with this step, I can put my whole body on it and just balance on this step. You can't do that with this step. You just, you won't be able to, you'll fall backwards. So in terms of an easier to access bed, well, this one obviously is if you have the multi-pro tailgate step down, but this one is if you don't. So if you just wanna quickly get into your bed, this is actually the easier tailgate to get into until you put this step system down. And when I say that, I mean by speed. So a good example of that is, Put this one up. Sorry for the wind noise. Okay, let me give you an example. If I want to get into the bed of the GMC Denali, I'm going to come up to it. I'm going to press one button and two button. Then I'm going to drop that down and now I can climb into it, right? Didn't take very long. But let's look at the Toyota. I walk up to the truck, press the button on the side, the step comes out. I'm already inside. So again, a little quicker, a little bit more convenient if you're using your tailgate a lot to step in and out of. This one's definitely going to be easier to load stuff into your bed if you need to use a step because it's a much wider platform and it acts as a true step. So in terms of who wins in this space, it's kind of a tie because you get more function out of this one, you get more convenience out of this one. So again, kind of a tie. My truck does not have the Carbon Pro bed, so it is a steel bed that's been uh, bed coated, whereas this truck has their composite bed. Um, don't know who the winner is here. Only time will tell. I think both beds are probably fine. They'll both hold up fine. Uh, Toyota probably gets a little bit of a, a point up in this area just because of the innovation and the fact that it's a lighter weight bed. And it probably will hold up a little better than this bed, to be honest. It's hard to say. Only time will tell. But I don't mind either bed. I don't need a truck to have one over the other, if that makes sense. They both have nice LED lighting at the top there. Toyota definitely has more of it. They put a ton of light into the bed of your truck if you turn on your high center mount light. And the other thing that Toyota absolutely wins in this space is your bed lighting. So your bed lighting is placed towards the center of the bed pointing in, whereas the GMC, the light's at the very back right there, and this light actually stays on. So if I'm in the back of the bed working, the light's gonna stay on for me and I can see what's going on in the bed of my truck. The light on my GMC shuts off after like 30 seconds. And I don't know exactly how long, 30, 40 seconds, but if you're still getting stuff out of the bed of your truck, you have to unlock your truck or you have to go to the interior of your truck and actually turn on your bed lights so you can see. So I think Toyota 
actually set this up the best. I do like the fact that Ram and Ford have a button on the side here to turn the light on. But as you can see, the Toyota lights are still on and the GMC lights have been off for a while now. Okay, so for the final category, which is ride comfort, which truck has a smoother ride? Absolutely the GMC Denali, hands down. Even though this Toyota has the air suspension in the back, it's full air suspension versus the Denali, which is traditional leaf sprung suspension, the ride comfort between the ride itself between these two trucks is entirely different. This feels borderline three quarter ton ish. It really does. It doesn't have the smoothest ride. It's kind of rough. It's kind of firm. Again, it feels like you're about to be in a three quarter ton truck. And that might be the, the route that Toyota is actually going for. They may be wanting you to feel like you're in more of a truck when you're in a Tundra. Whereas the GMC Denali feels like you're in a luxury SUV. It's actually smoother than my wife's Expedition. The suspension on this truck is more plush. It definitely takes bumps better. It feels feels more dampened. A good example of that is when you go over expansion joints or even speed bumps. This truck, even the rear suspension on a truck that doesn't have a bunch of stuff in it, this truck kind of gently dampens. This truck feels like it's gently dampening that bump. On the Toyota, on the other hand, it feels a bit jarring. It feels like you're in a three quarter ton truck, like a truck that's empty that needs weight in the back of it. So from a ride comfort perspective, hands down the GMC Denali, in my opinion, is the more comfortable riding truck. This isn't bad, but it's definitely, in my opinion, approaching more of a three quarter ton in terms of feel. Not quite at that level yet, but it's a couple ticks down from what a three quarter ton truck might feel like. Again, both trucks are absolutely amazing trucks. Everybody who I know that owns a Toyota, when they see this truck, they absolutely love it. Everyone who owns a GMC absolutely loves this truck. So for most people, they'll probably just get the truck that they gravitate to the most, the truck that they've had the best luck with, or the truck brand that they've owned the longest. But as a head to head competition, this is my analysis. I wanted to make it very, very simple and very easy to understand like if I'm sitting down around a fire pit with you talking to you about the pros and cons of both trucks so I hope I accomplished that oh by the way they both have 10-speed automatic transmissions anyways guys I sure hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon